Hi, my name is Anish Desikin, and I'm here to talk to you about jamming at Global Game Jam next. And I'm specifically going to talk to you about how games are made and how everyone really works together. And it's really important that participants are able to work together effectively to create something great. So what is the jamming process? The process actually starts with ideation, and then we go into team formation, then we build the product, and we have final moments. And the things I really want to focus on are the ideation and the team formation, because these really play into the rest of the jam. If this process goes well, the whole jam will be a better experience for everyone. Let me first talk about the ideation process. In general, at a global game jam, you'll have some sort of theme that all the participants will have to work with and create a game based on. And the ideation process can really help branch off of that theme and make it into something that can actually be formed into a game. So the way we come up with ideas should be done in groups. And the first thing we can do is actually have brainstorming games. Brainstorming games are so important to get people to feel comfortable with each other and to bring out some amazing ideas that wouldn't otherwise come out. Most of these are improv games, like those in the show Whose Line Is It Anyway, as you can see in the picture. They're crazy games and fun, but they really get the ideas flowing and they basically make it easy for people to come together and feel comfortable with each other. Some examples of these games are Yes and, Questions Only, and Scenes from a Hat. And these are really just fun games, and we'll get into the specifics of what these games are in the next lesson. Mood boards are essential in the ideation phase of games, and I strongly encourage that individuals and teams do this together for any ideas that they create that they want to pursue further. So let's say that they've just played some improv games and they have this idea that they really want to pursue, um, but they don't know how to go about turning that into a game. Well, before you turn it into a game, you really need to know what's the feeling that you want? What is the feeling that you want the players to experience when they play the game? So, for example, do you want your players to feel like they are flying in the game? Do you want them to feel compassionate? Do you want them to feel like they have freedom of speech? Something like this will really guide the design process and flesh out the idea further. After participants have created their ideas and gotten the juices flowing, they really need to think about team formation. This is probably the most important phase in the jamming process because who you work with really determines how successful and how much fun you have in designing your game. So once participants have gotten into groups, done these improv activities and games, created some mood boards, a lot of them will at this point have a good idea of what they really want to build and others will still be kind of uncertain, but this is the time where some participants will come out and pitch the ideas that they're really passionate about and try to recruit other members. So they really want to find out who's interested in building this idea with me. What's important to note here is that the people who join your team in the end don't have to be the same people who helped you form the idea in the ideation phase. So when an individual goes up and pitches their idea, Anyone from any group can come and say, I'm interested in building this with you. Let me join your team. So here are some important tips. Everyone should try to keep an open mind. It's okay to join someone else's team. What that means is some people really are very adamant about their idea and they're not really open to doing anyone else's idea. But the sad truth is sometimes no one else is interested in making something that you're really interested in making. So it's important to make sure that participants feel like they can join someone else's team and work on some other idea and they don't have to only focus on their idea. Another important tip is that diversity is very important and meeting new people 
is essential in the jamming process. The best ideas have always come from diverse teams with many backgrounds and many different perspectives who can come together and make something really great. So I'm now going to talk briefly about the build process, and we're not going to go too deep into this because there are other lessons about this, but I want to give an overview of how to set the mindset of the participants while they're in the early stages of building. So the first thing you really need to highlight is the design thinking process. And what that means is you have to get participants to think about what their players are going to so they have to think about who this game is going to be designed for. Is it designed for people their age? Is it designed for adults? Is it designed for children? Is it designed specifically for people at their high school, for example? Once they know who the game is for, it'll really guide how they build out the game. And everyone should be on the same page. The other thing to ask is, how do we quantify whether the game is successful. And what that means is, how do we really get to know whether the game is giving the feelings that we initially intended in our mood board and in our ideation phases? So once you have an understanding of how to quantify that, you create a survey. You create a list of questions you ask people while they're playing. And several times throughout the jamming process, you should get people to play it, whether they're people within your team or people from other teams or even mentors. You should ask them the questions that you created in your survey so that you get a better idea of how to improve your game. For more details on this iteration and design thinking process, you should see lessons in the game design category. So you'll get a lot of questions about how you actually build a game. I'm not going to get into the specifics here, but you can see other lessons like analog game making, making digital games with visual tools, making digital games with coding and scripting, and these will help you mentor the participants and be able to teach them how to do the specific building steps. However, the whole time they're building, you should be checking in with teams frequently and continuing to encourage them to ask mentors and other teams for advice if they get stuck. The final moments before the end of the jam are really important and often very stressful. So here is how to deal with those moments. You want to make sure that participants don't make any major changes at the last moment. This is something that happens very frequently and often causes projects to fail at the last moment. The goal should always be to make something that works, something that you're proud of, and something that you can show your friends. This is often enough motivation for participants to understand that something of value should be produced at the end of the game jam. But always remember that if it doesn't work, don't sweat it, don't worry about it, there will be other jams. Thank you, and in conclusion, I'd like to reiterate that jamming is really important for participants to gain knowledge, but also to really improve their communication and teamwork skills and meet new people and have a lot of fun.